Hello. Morning. Oh, where have you been? We've been here. We've been waiting here for a week for you. <laughs> We're in the same place where we left you last time. Remember we came around the corner because the boat that left his engine on that was going <laughs> But it's lovely here. If you want to check it out on what three words, they are Holly Beads Marathon. Perfect spot. Sounds like some blog, doesn't it? I did the 2017 Boston Marathon. Check out my blog, Holly Beads Marathon. Doesn't it? I wonder if she finished. I don't know. <laughs> What, the, the blog or the marathon? Both. You'd have to read the blog to find out, I suppose, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. Anyway, uh, back to us. <laughs> it's a lovely spot. About 200 yards that way is a railway line. <laughs> then 200 yards further on, there's a big viaduct and a railway line. And then a bit further on from that is the M40. If you listen carefully, you might be able to hear it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. On this side, it's just fields and thousands and thousands of sheeps. Yep. Sheeps? Sheeps, that's right. The S. They're really friendly. Every time Dylan comes out of the boat, they come rushing up to the fence to say hello to Dylan, and Dylan's like, I'm not having this, and gets back on the boat and asks for a biscuit. <laughs> Doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Uh, you might be able to see the black and white bridge just behind us, in front of you. Uh, that's bridge <laughs> 193. That's the direction we're going today. We need some water. We need to get rid of the rubbish. Oh, you don't want to know. No. Uh, so we go into Lower Hayford, which is the next water point. Uh, we've got to go through a big deep lock through a village called Somerton, through Upper Hayford, past an old RAF base. Aeroplanes. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna get some water. Are you ready? I am. Come on. One of the traits of autism, of Asperger's, ASD, whatever you want to call it, is the inability to cope with change very well. And I love it when we find a nice mooring like that and we can stay here for a week. Over lockdown it's been two, maybe three weeks sometimes where we've stayed in one place. And it kind of starts to feel like home, so when the day comes that you have to move, you get that, I don't know how to describe it, not like homesickness, but it's like a bit of a sadness that you're having to leave. It's like you're moving house again. And I know that we'll find somewhere just as nice further down the canal, but you always kind of get this little feeling of sadness when you leave such a nice place. This is lock 34, Somerton Deep Lock. It's 12 foot deep. Deepest one we've been in in quite a while, I tell you. It's not the deepest one on the system. That one's on the Rochdale Canal, Chule Lane Lock at Sowerby Bridge. It's 19 feet, eight and a half inches deep. But even that pales into significance. There's one in a place called Oskerman in Kazakhstan. And it goes from like this dam, down back down to the river. And that one's 138 feet deep. You have to go in like this enclosed capsule to go down it. So that one is 12 times deeper than this one. That puts it into perspective, doesn't it? As you come out of Somerton Deep Lock, you go under bridge 194, which is Somerton Deep Lock Bridge. Who'd have guessed? But it wasn't always bridge 194. Until the modernization of the northern part of the Oxford back in the 1820s. And what they did is they basically shortened the length of the canal between Coventry and Braunston by about half. 
and when they modernized it they renumbered all the bridges so before the modernization that used to be bridge 151 all oh, right and you can still see the original stone carved number on both sides of the bridge it's one of the only bridges where you can still see that around Somerton are just amazing there's all this flat land on one side and trains on the other thing is when it rains all this flat land on our right hand side floods and it's just like water for miles and miles and miles uh, there's a couple of other youtubers that have got videos when it's flooded like that is it yeah but in summer it's lovely beautiful more trains please <laughs> You know, we cruise along these beautiful canals and this is absolutely beautiful, especially on a day like today. And it's easy to forget just how many people have battled over the years to keep these canals open. Back in the 1950s, British Waterways did a survey and they actually proposed closing a lot of the narrow canals down, just like this one, the Oxford. But back then there were just as many people battling and passionate about the canals to keep them open than there are today. And a lady called Joan Marston, she teamed up with the Midlands branch of the Inland Waterways Association, and they organized a festival in Banbury. They had canoe races, they were showing films, and they were having dinner dances. And thousands of people, between five and 10,000 people, went to the festival, and over 50 boats went. And it showed British waterways just how serious people were about using the canals, and they backed down. Lock 36, <laughs> just round that corner. I promise it's there. <laughs> uh, Allen's Lock and Allen's Bridge, Bridge 204. Does he have a key as well? <laughs> Allen key. It's Allen's Lock. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that tickled me. We've been filmed from both angles. Oh, look. That's crazy. Uh, if you get off the boat, mow the boat up at Allen's Lock and walk up the hill for about a mile, it's an old RAF airbase. It was closed back in 1993, so there's no planes taking off and landing anymore. And the whole airfield is, is slowly being transformed into like business units and All right. businesses and houses. Uh, and a car auction place has got like thousands and thousands of cars on part of the runway. They wouldn't miss one. Would they? Like, <laughs> they wouldn't miss one. I'll have that one. I like that one. I'll have that one. Uh, it was built in the 1920s uh, for the RAF, and then after the Second World War, the Americans moved in, and the Americans used it during the Cold War. Uh, but then, like I say, it was closed in 1993. 
but when you look at it it looks like it's still in use the runway is still there and at one point it was the second longest runway in Europe You might notice the bridge 205 mill lift bridge looked a little bit different from the others the others are like black and white wood bridges they're a bit cheap really cheap no they were made on the cheap oh were they? yeah to get the canal down to oxford but that one's a bit different that was made out of iron that's not the original one the original one was made out of iron and that's because there was an ancient mill just on the side of the river and they needed a really strong bridge so that the miller windy miller no, it'll have been Windy Miller's great great granddad, won't it? It will have been, yeah. Yeah, Wallace Miller. Wallace. Or Breezy. No, Breezy Miller. Breezy Miller. Yeah, Breezy Miller. Uh, anyway, <laughs> they had to make the bridge strong enough to get uh, Breezy Miller's really heavy traction engine over the bridge. All oh, right. They closed the mill down after the Second World War. Do you know why? Nope, I have no idea. It's quite funny because the mill was a bit like clatter bang kind of thing clatter bang yeah and every time breezy miller had his mill going it was so oh, <laughs> noisy yeah yeah like noisy and the vibration started to make the mill fall down really so it got uneconomical to keep repairing the mill every time it kind of vibrated itself silly that sounds wrong doesn't it <laughs> we'll leave that one there We've got water. Woohoo! Yay! And we got rid of the rubbish. Oh, there was so much rubbish. The boat doesn't smell like a tip anymore. And the washing's going now, which is all good. So we've got clean pants too. Uh, that was bridge 207. About half a mile, quarter to a half a mile that way to our right is Rousham House. Uh, it's built in the 1600s. It's been in the same family for hundreds of years and the gardens were landscaped by William Kent in the 18th century and they've not changed at all. So I sent the drone over to have a look. So you can see all these lovely gardens and this lovely house while you can hear our washers spinning in the background. <laughs> now that's culture. <laughs> Pretty good day, two hours and 40 minutes according to the Canal Plan website. We love this because the, the guidebooks tell us how long it should take and we set off at half past eight this morning and it's now half past three. So half eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two. So two hours, 40 minutes in seven hours. It's because we do a lot of filming though. We do a lot of filming and we do some faffing. We do some faffing too. No, I'll put you right. Colin does some faffing. Sean's about to put the tea on, we're having a fry up. Bacon, egg, sausage, tomato, beans, toast and tea. Bring no it toast! So he's, while he's doing that, I'm gonna top up my tan on the roof. So we better turn the camera off now. 
It's always me working. <laughs> you don't want to see that, do you? Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this little journey today. Uh, if you have, give us a thumbs up. There you go. <laughs> Better still, subscribe to the channel and uh, click the notifications. YouTube will let you know every time we release a new vlog. It would help us massively if you could support the channel. Uh, there's a join button on the home page or on the video page for this video. Uh, you can also do it through Patreon. There is a link in which corner? It's above your head. Just normal, here. Isn't it? There you go. Uh, just click, 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 Click that and it will take you through to Patreon. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed your day with us. We will see you next time. Take care of yourself. Bye. Ta ra! Oh, cucumbers. Like Bert from Mary Poppins. <laughs> you look more like Fred Dibner. <laughs> What's that? It's me, Jimmy Sweet. <laughs> it looks more like we're a Ken Dodds old tickling stick. Oh, oh my god. Uh, right, tell the people what we're doing. Today, we're going to sweep the chimney off Silver Fox. Well, what do we need to do? We need to go inside and take the insides of the fire out the baffle, the sides, the back, everything. Right, go on then. See you in a bit. Chip chibberry, chip chibberry, chip chip cheroo. Okay. <laughs> Now that we've got that prepared, down inside the boat, we need to put our chimney sweep together. But this is especially for ours. All done. All done. Simple. Your end's all dirty. It's all manky. You're all dirty. Oh, they don't like it open. You look like a right dip. <laughs> Says the man behind the camera with nothing on. Shh. <laughs> Dance like you mean it. Okay. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Oh, look at that. Just a cupful. It's like a little volcano. Hey. <laughs> We always have to check for people because you cannot see a soul for days and then as soon as you turn the camera on all right, all right. just from nowhere people arrive it's like a football match <laughs> and that's the, 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 the that's the direction we're heading ah oh. if you want to check this place out on what three words they are this week you've forgotten haven't you we will get this done. That were an S Club 7 song, wasn't it? Don't stop moving. Sheeps! Fine. That's really loud, isn't it?